continuing uh, the fair and unfair dice example of chi-squared, I talked about the ideas and why a chi-squared test would work, but let's do um, let's do the explicit calculations, both more or less by hand with a little help from the calculator and then also completely with the calculator. So we want to know if this die is fair or not, and we've done 108 rolls, and hopefully that's enough to give us an idea. Um, and here's the results. It, for uh, num The number one came up six times, the number two came up a whopping 32 times, the number three came up 16 times, etc. So this is how many times they all came up. Uh, minimum was six for the ones, and the maximum was certainly 32 for the two. And we'd like to know, is this just pretty reasonable for a fair die, or does it indicate, uh, strongly indicate that it's not a fair die? Well, we look at the expected counts, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the chi-square statistic, and then we're going to compare it to what the chi-square should be. So we're basically going to see which of these dots is it. Is it one of these dots? Is it one of these? Is it one of these? And then we're going to um, compare it to how a fair die would, would look. If we get a chi-square that's in here in the bulk of where the fair die examples would be, we're not going to be that surprised. We're going to say, eh, it's probably fair, or it, we don't have any reason to believe it's not fair. If we get a number out here, then we're going to be much more sure that it's not fair. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I have it already pre-calculated, so you don't have to watch me. Okay, so the chi-squared statistic is you take all the observed minus uh, expected squared and divide it by the expected, and it turns out that that normalizes it correctly um, so that it's not, so that you kind of get a universal measure of how much how surprising it is. And then the only other thing you need to put in is the degrees of freedom. In this case, that's going to be 6 minus 1, which is 5. So like in the book, if you're doing this by hand, it's nice to have a table. I, I'm organizing it by columns instead of by rows, but it's pretty similar. All I did was I added to my table. I said, well, what's the residual? This is always something interesting. How different is the ex result that I got from the expected result? These guys, notice the odd numbers are on the low side. That's interesting and the even numbers are on the high side. The 1 and 2 are the ones that are really out there. Without those, it might not actually be that striking. And if you look at this, this, if you just look at the, the bottom four, that doesn't look that unfair. This seems pretty weird. Okay. So we look at those and we square them, partly just to get rid of the negatives. We want to count any difference as significant. And then also because the whole mechanism of, of normal models and, and chi-square and that kind of stuff depends on that squaring. Um, then we divide by the expected. 144 divided by 18 gives us 8, 10.9, 0.22, etc. Okay, these guys are called the components, or they're called the TI calls them the contri contributions to the chi-square statistic. And this is going to be meaningful again. The 8 and the 11, these guys are dominating, absolutely dominating the contribution of the chi-square. In this particular example, these guys hardly even matter compared to these guys. Okay, and that you can often go back and say something about, um, well, I think it's, it's unusual because such and such. In this case, we're going to see, say, it's, it seems unusual, it seems unfair because mainly of the ones and twos of what we're seeing there. So we just add them up, pretty simple, and we get 21.22. Now, of course, for a, a T-score or a Z-score, that would be incredibly huge, but that's not how chi-squares work. Chi-squares uh, scores can be this big in certain cases, especially if the degrees of freedom are big. But... Now is where we actually do appeal to the technology. We look for the p-value. How unlikely is it to get a chi-squared of 21.22 with 5 degrees of freedom? So it's very similar. We're going to see in the next, um, the la rest of this chapter and the next and, and very last chapter in our book, some more complicated degrees of freedom formulas. Most of the time so far, it's been an n minus 1. Very important here, it's not 108 minus 1 here. Absolutely not 108 minus 1. That's not what's going on. It's not the sample size. It's the number of uh, categories minus 1. So it's going to be 5 degrees of freedom. Okay. Um, so we just look at the p value for chi squared greater than 21.22 with 5 degrees of freedom. And I'll show you how to do that on the TI in a second. What we discover is it actually is quite small. Okay. So, and that's what's going on here. You can see 21 is out here. Uh, ooh, let's see. Let's go back to the. Yeah, 21. Whoa, that's even off the chart. There was not a single fair die roll out of, I think I did 200 batches of 108 rolls, where the chi-squared ended up being uh, that big. Okay, so it's really, it's really very unlikely, and that means we would re strongly reject the null hypothesis. We'd say this die is, is biased. Okay, um, so 
how you would get this after doing all the other stuff by hand, really not very complicated calculations, just a little tedious. Um, you go to the uh, second vars, which is the distribution menu, our, one of our favorite menus for stats. Go down to 8, which is chi-squared CDF. Remember, it's the, the whole area under a, under a curve. That's what we're usually interested in. And it's got a little menu in this operating system. Lower, 21.22. Upper, I just put in something really big. Make sure it's not just 10. That's not going to work for chi-squared. At least like 99, and probably 999 is pretty good. Degrees of freedom is 5. You paste it in. It puts that in, press enter, and we get our value. Okay. So the conclusion here, well, actually, before I, yeah, before I show you how to do it all in the TI, the conclusion is that this die is uh, not fair, or to be more precise, we reject the null hypothesis that it is fair. Um, with you know p less than what was it 0.1 percent okay we're pretty we're pretty sure okay and we could note that um, in our roles we're not necessarily saying that this is what's special about the die but in our roles um, the major contribution to chi squared oops was from one and two so that would give us some some uh, impetus to go back and say, well, maybe it's really just one and two that are out of whack. Maybe the other ones are okay. Okay. Turns out the way they set this up on Fathom is they made it more likely for evens to come up than odds. And you can see that pattern from the minuses and the pluses. It's just that in this particular case, one and two were dramatically different, and the threes through six wasn't so dramatically different. If we re-randomize, uh, well, actually, one and two are still pretty different there. Here, yeah, here one and two aren't quite so different, but you can see this even uh, odd, even odd, even odd, even pattern. This would have given more uniform residuals for the one through six. Okay, there's always going to be some residual randomness. Ooh, let's not go down that far. Okay, so that's the conclusion. If you want to do it all in the TI, you just go to Stat Edit and you put in your observed in one list and and expected in another. I happen to do L5 and L6 because I still I have L1 through L4 for something else. Okay. Now you go to stat test, go all the way down to D, chi squared go goodness of fit test. Remember, do make sure it's chi squared GOF, because chi squared test is a bit different. We'll talk about that later in the chapter. Okay. Gives you a little menu, observed L5, expected L6, DF5, calculate, boom. Gives us exactly that chi squared, gives us the p value, reminds us of the degrees of freedom, and it even gives you the con the contributions, okay? The eight, ten point eight eight. And I and if you right if you're sitting right here on this menu and you p push the right arrow key, it'll actually scroll that over and you can see all these contributions. So it started out with 8 and 10.88, it was probably 10.8888, something like that. Um, and then I scrolled over to see some more of those. Well, what if you want that for later use? You can put that into the stat edit menu. I'll just talk about that real quick. Go to the stat edit menu, go to a blank column. While you're there, press list, uh, which is uh, second stat, and then names, and then you have to scroll down quite a bit to find contrib, but it should be there. Hit enter, and what that does is it puts contrib here. You could also just type in the alpha menu, C-N-R-T-R-B, but this is easier. Okay, especially if you forget how it, what it's named. And then that puts that in there. Hit enter again, and you've got that list of contributions. If you want to manipulate that or report that in some way of the, uh, the list of contributions. And again, it's telling us, whoa, the real evidence, the main evidence for this particular run was from the ones and twos. Okay.